Other games going final across the evening slate. SoFi overrun by the red and gold of the San Francisco 49er faithful. They walk out of there with another W. That's usually how it goes unless playoffs. They don't want to bring mm -hmm. it up, but 30 to 23, your final there, San Francisco, an assertive effort once again in moving to 2 0. Back in studio with Ryan Wilson to say what he saw. Uh, Ryan, another fantastic game out of the 49ers. Always seems to be a comprehensive effort with limited mistakes. I want to talk about the Rams as well because they've looked great through two weeks. But this is, again, that conversation at the top of the division. Two teams that have been pitted against each other for a long time and still advantage San Francisco. Absolutely. We've seen Kyle Shanahan have Sean McVay's number time and time and time again. And the big talking point coming into the season, Joe, was what? Brock Purdy, how is he going to respond from the elbow surgery? Turns out Brock Purdy is fine, and he is their franchise quarterback all along. By the way, fun fact, first matchup in NFL history between the first overall pick, Matthew Stafford back wow. in the day, and Mr. Irrelevant, of course, Brock Purdy. So Brock Purdy came out of top again. The 49ers have won 12 straight games over that stretch show. They are plus 189 in the points differential. And just for some perspective, last year's Vikings team that went 13-4, mm -hmm. their point differential minus three. So they are doing it on both sides of the ball. We know that Kyle Shanahan and that run game is going to be on point. Christian McCaffrey went for 115 today. And then the defense took over. And no surprise, it starts with Fred Warner. It starts with Hafanga. And they just keep balling out, play after play, making plays. And they are, it feels like, Two weeks in, the best team in the NFL. Yeah, all pros across the field. Sign us up right now for that Cowboys 49ers NFC Championship. It's not, it's not going to ahead of ourselves here. Uh, there are plenty of other teams making great effort moving forward. You mentioned Christian McCaffrey here. Now 12-0 regular season on the 49ers since his addition. Uh, not only fitting the scheme, but elevating it as well. On the Los Angeles side, Puka Nakua, uh, 15 for 147, <laughs> setting records in the process, although it comes in a loss here. But you find this piece in the absence of your A1 wide receiver. Moving forward, what can that do for a team when you can slide Nakua more often in the slot or even outside when you can really start working two-man game with Cooper Cup when he comes back healthy? What a find. So fifth round pick out of BYU. He was at the senior bowl. Rick Spillman and I saw him there. And he, he was okay. Big target, 6'1", 200 pounds. Ran in the four fives. Plays so much faster than that. And you touched on it, Joe. He can line up inside the slot. You can move him outside. Last week, 10 catches for 119. Tied with 2-2 added well for the team lead. This week, what did we say? 15 for 147 at 20 targets. What are we doing? If you told me that Puka Nakua ripped his mask off in the locker room after the game and it was Cooper Cup, I'd be like, oh, okay, that, that makes a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. But a great find by Les Snead in that front office. And to your point, you add Cooper Cup, that takes pressure off Nakua. I mean, defensive coordinators are now saying to themselves, okay, we have to game plan for Puka Nakua and Tutu Atwell. Bring Cooper Cup back and hats off to 37-year-old Matthew Stafford. He has looked rejuvenated in this offense, and they look like a different football team when he's healthy. A wide receiving core of Tutu Atwell and Puka Nakua, surely to give defenses and analysts all sorts of issue throughout the season. Let's take a look at the fantasy numbers coming out of this one. And who else? Nakua, 29 points. He was hot last week. He's probably not there. If he is, get in your waiver claim. Puka Nakua, wide receiver one in L.A. until further notice.